Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to my YouTube channel, Dr. Akif Big. Today we'll be talking about 2023 updates on uh, diagnosis and treatment of acute and chronic heart failure. So as we all know, uh, there has been in 2021, the European Society of Cardiology has given a guidelines for the management of and diagnosis of acute and chronic heart failure. So there has been some updates on a few changes which we will be talking about. Uh, the changes from the previous version, what has occurred uh, during these two years, that is the main our focus is. So as we all know, uh, the last time uh, in 2021 ESC guidelines has given a, a, a classification of heart failure as heart failure with reduced ejection fraction, heart failure with mildly reduced ejection fraction, and heart failure with preserved ejection fraction. So heart failure with preserved ejection fraction was defined as symptoms and signs with ejection fraction of more than 50. And there should be an objective evidence of cardiac structural and other functional abnormalities. So a heart failure with reduced ejection fraction is EF of less than 40. And if the EF is between 41 to 49, it was called as mildly reduced ejection fraction. So the first recommendation now which we have, which this ESC 2023 has given is that it is based on the Emperor Preserved and Delivered Trial. So what does this Emperor Preserved and Delivered Trial say is that SGLT2 inhibitor. So in 2021, the SGLT2 inhibitors was included in as a class 1 recommendation for management of heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. Now, in new based on these findings now they have given it as class 1 recommendation not only for the heart failure with reduced ejection fraction but also for heart failure with mildly reduced ejection fraction and heart failure with preserved ejection fraction but one important thing to be noted is that it should note that it was the there is significant reduction was only in the heart failure hospitalization but there was no reduction in cardiovascular death so there was no effect of cardiovascular death in both the mildly reduced ejection fraction group as well as in the preserved ejection fraction group though in both of them there was no uh, much effect in cardiovascular death and but there was decrease in the incidence of heart failure hospitalization so based on that it has given it as a class 1 recommendation that is dapagliflozin empagliflozin so as you all know other uh, for heart failure mid range ejection mildly reduced ejection fraction or heart failure with uh, uh, EF of 41 to 49. The first class recommendations was only diuretics in before. Now even SGLT2 inhibitors has been come as a class 1 recommendations. Uh, and as we all know, IC inhibitors, ARNI or ARB is class 2B. Mandela receptor antagonists are also class 2B and beta blockers are also class 2B recommendations. So management of uh, patients with heart failure preserved ejection yeah. fraction, it was only diuretics before. Now even SGLT2 inhibitors has been included and also the treatment of the etiology you have to do. The third recommendation given by in that uh, given by the CSC 2023 is that once a patient has been uh, hospitalized for acute heart failure and then when they have gone for a discharge, they have been found that based on some studies they have found that if the patient follow up of, uh, visit in the first six weeks, uh, weeks then hospitalization is uh, so after hospitalization first to follow up visit is recommended within six weeks. So that has found to have a good outcomes and uh, decrease in the rehospitalization those from it. So another recommendation was given in patients with type 2 diabetes mellitus uh, and uh, with CKD to prevent the occurrence of heart failure. What they have seen that uh, including fenrenone, fenrenone which is the mineral receptor antagonist in CKD patients, if you uh, prescribe this fenrenone drug, it was found to reduce the risk of heart failure hospitalization. Also, SGLT2 inhibitors uh, are recommended to reduce the risk of heart failure hospitalization or cardiovascular death. Both of this one are also given as a class 1 recommendations in case of this. So recommendation of table 5 what was said that it is based on the management of iron deficiency in patients with heart failure. So class 1 recommendation says that if any patient of heart failure, if it is he is symptomatic, he or she is symptomatic and with a uh, documented uh, iron deficiency is there, then you have to give intravenous iron supplementation and it is class 1 recommendation. However, they have seen that intravenous uh, iron supplementation with ferric carboxymaltose or ferric deriso maltose should be considered in symptomatic patients with heart failure with reduced ejection fraction and, and mildly reduced ejection fraction and iron deficiency to reduce the risk of heart failure and hospitalization. So that are all the main uh, updates which are given in the ESC 2023. Uh, hope uh, you have liked this update. If you want more updates like this, uh, do subscribe to my YouTube channel, Dr. Akif Peg. Thank you.